Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about chapter 8 in your textbook. Um, so this is a very short chapter, but it has a lot of calculations, so make sure you have a calculator ready, okay? So we're going to talk about business costs and productions. Alright, so first you need to know what is the goal for business. Now for any business, their goal is to maximize profit. Um, but before you know profit, you're going to know what is the company cost. So imagine that if you're a manager for a fast food restaurant, uh, what kind of operation decision do you need to make? So, so for example, how many uh, employees to hire, um, what kind of machine to use, what kind of capital you will use, uh, and then other inputs such as such as raw material, such as uh, advertisement cost for all those costs, you gotta think about it. So to find this profit or loss, um, profit equals to your total revenue minus total cost. Uh, total revenue, uh, this is how much money we're collecting from customers. <coughs> So imagine um, that let's suppose you have a business and your business is cash only. So how much cash is in your register by the end of the day? That's your total revenue. So how much money you're collecting from customers? That's your total revenue. And then total cost is the cost of everything you must pay for and that is your total cost. So your profit, which is a goal for a company, is to maximize profit. It's your total revenue minus total cost and that's a profit. And if your total revenue is more than total cost, you have a profit. But if your total revenue uh, is less than total cost, then you'll lose money. All right. Uh, next, know the difference between ex explicit and implicit cost. So explicit cost uh, is any type of out-of-pocket expenses that you must pay money for uh, out-of-pocket. That's your explicit cost. So most of the costs you guys think about in a business, uh, your cost of labor, uh, cost of capital, they're all explicit cost because you got to pay money for it, got to pay out of pocket for it. Um, implicit cost, this is the opportunity cost. So the owner's time, uh, the, the owner's other investment opportunity, they must give up to invest in this business. They're all implicit cost. So again, explicit cost is what you pay money out of pocket for. So your rent, your wage, your production cost, uh, implicit cost, that's our, that's our, that is our opportunity cost. So there are two types of profit. There's accounting profit, uh, which is revenue minus your explicit cost. So for most accountants, this is what they show on the book. It shows the accounting profit. Um, but your economic profit is going to be your uh, revenue, so same revenue, minus the total between your implicit and explicit cost. So we're considering this implicit cost um, in our uh, economic profit. So another way to find economic profit is use your accounting profit minus implicit cost. And because your implicit cost is always positive, uh, so your economic profit is more always more than accounting profit. Uh, one way to think about it, uh, imagine, imagine this. Imagine uh, if I find a job for you. So let's suppose, hey guys, uh, I want you to deliver uh, this textbook for me. Uh, and I'll pay you a hundred dollars. Now would you do it? Of course you will, right? But what if I tell you um, the destination is somewhere in China? Well, you know what? No, let's find a better place. Uh, the destination is going to be El Paso, and you had to drive twelve hours to go to El Paso to deliver a textbook for me, and I'll pay you a hundred dollars for that, right? Then, then it might not be worth it, right? So you have your uh, your explicit cost, which is the gas. Um, your food on the way and it's also implicit cost of opportunity cost so by the end you might lose money right so because um, we're thinking about this economic profit but if you just look at your book it only shows your uh, your $100 uh, minus the gas right minus maybe food uh, you might be positive uh, accounting profit but once you take into uh, consideration of the implicit cost you can have a negative economic profit so you, you might be losing money all right, so some example here. So uh, for accounting profit, uh, for a company here, we're going to use our revenue minus our wage, uh, our rental insurance, our food. Uh, and then you're going to show on your book a positive profit of $500. Now remember, this is your accounting profit. But for economic profit, you also take away your opportunity cost for owner's time, opportunity cost for owner's capital, and then by the end, you actually don't make a profit. You actually lose $200 according to your economic profit. Okay, so that's the difference. So accounting profit is what shows, what shows in your book. Um, that is only the explicit cost. 
your economic profit is both the explicit plus implicit cost. Okay, so they're all part of it. All right, so next, let's look at something called a production function. So production function describes the relationship between your input and output. So how much do you put into the company? This would be the resources. And then your production. So how much do we put into the company? And how much do we get? Production. <laughs> production. So how much do we get out of it? Okay, so um, so let me show you a very basic example. Uh, so over here shows our number of workers and then our number of output. So this would be how many meals we serve. So when you have zero workers, uh, we produce nothing. You have one workers, your production is five meals. Two workers, 15, and then three, 30, four is 42, and so forth, so on. Um, this turn here, uh, the marginal part of labor. Now this shows you how many additional output do you get from each additional labor. So another way to put it is just how much do you produce, uh, how much more do you produce if you hire one more worker. The easiest way to find your marginal part of labor, uh, now the formula for that, that will be your change in quantity produced over change in labor. Um, but the easiest way, just find the difference between each level of total production. Uh, that is our marginal output. So between 0 and 5 is a 5. Between 5 and 15 is a 10. And then 30, 15 and 30 is 15. So this marginal product is just the difference between each level of total product. Okay. Um, and if you graph your total total production, uh, your total production is in three phases. So first it's going up very fast, and then it's kind of slowing down. And then after this point here, it's kind of going down. So if you, this can be all described by our uh, marginal product. So for marginal product, see this green section when the when the total output is like concave up, right? So that's a positive slope. So you see a, a positive marginal product. Or, or increase in marginal product, and then it becomes concave down, right? So once concave down, uh, your marginal product is, is decreasing, but at the highest level, so before the total product comes down, your your marginal product is zero. So one thing to know is that whenever the marginal product is equal to zero, your total product um, is maximized, okay? Um, these two at the same level, they happen at the same time. <clears throat> and then for anybody who is studying, um, you know, calculus, uh, the marginal product and total product, they're just um, this. That's like your your first derivative and then second derivative. Okay, so but for now, just know that um, when the marginal product equals zero, your total product is maximized. You produce the most possible. All right, so know a concept called diminishing marginal product. So this happens uh, when you have more input, so you put in more resources, but you're producing at a slower rate. Um, if you look at that on the graph, um, this portion here, that is a diminishing marginal product. Because as you put in more stuff, uh, as, you have, as you hire more workers, so my number of employees goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7, uh, so far. Um, but my, my marginal production, how much more do I produce, is decreasing. Um, that's called um, diminishing marginal product. Okay. All right, so a couple of practice here. So first, um, if, you know, if your total output with seven workers is uh, 70, uh, your total output with A workers is 82, was the marginal product of the A's worker. So it would be the difference between 82 and 70. Um, that's just 12. Okay, so use your total production of 8 people minus total production of 7 people, and that difference is going to be 12, and that's your marginal production. <coughs> that's, that is just how many more output do you get from the A's worker you hire. Okay, so when you hire seven people, I produce 70. When I hire eight people, I produce 82. So again, the last person produced 12 units. Um, and then where does the marginal product begin in this question here? So for marginal production, uh, to see where the diminishing marginal production, uh, per, diminishing marginal product begin, we're going to find out what is our marginal product first. So for marginal product, let me uh, write it on the side. So marginal product. 
um, the first level here is a three, there's a difference, and then the five, um, and then we have, uh, this is what, this is two, two, and then we have one, and then this will become minus two, and last one become uh, minus three. So it looks like uh, that our, our maximum production happens at this level here, right? And it's asking for where does our diminishing marginal product begin? Well, the answer choice is incorrect. <laughs> so it shouldn't be 12, 10, 82, and 8. Uh, the answer should be right here. So after the second worker, uh, our diminishing marginal product began. Because for the first worker, you have a 3. You have a 5 that's still increasing, right? But see how it becomes 2, 1, minus 2. So it becomes decreasing. So this is the cutoff point. So after the second worker, uh, we have diminishing marginal product. All right, so next, uh, there are different type of cost. Um, so first, no difference between a short run and a long run. So short run and long run. So in the short run, you have some cost um, that is fixed. So some cost wouldn't change. So same cost uh, in the short run. But in the long run, every cost become variable. So all costs become flexible. Uh, that's called long run. Uh, one way to think about it, think about rent. Uh, for rent, if I open a business, let's suppose I open a chicken fried rice business, uh, my rent is fixed, doesn't matter how much I produce, right? So that would be a short run. But in the long run, when it's time to renew, renew my lease, I can change my rent and then that will become a flexible. So once, once rent is fixed, it doesn't change, that's called short run. But once rent becomes flexible, that's called long run. So three type of um, three costs over here. So first, something called a variable cost. So variable cost, this will change depends on how much you produce. So if, imagine I, I own a business, uh, again, a chicken fried rice business, uh, and it's, I didn't have some type of cost, right? So uh, let's do it over here. So I need um, chicken, chicken, <laughs> of course, uh, rice. I also need uh, labor or employees. I need utility, I need rent, um, anything else, like equipment uh, or tools. Let's just call it capital, okay? So this uh, um, this capital is our fiscal capital. All right, so uh, guys, if I produce more chicken fried rice, do I need more chicken? Um, yes, I do need more chicken, right? Uh, if I produce more chicken fried rice, do I need to pay for rice? I um, need more rice, yes. Um, hire more employees, yes. Uh, uh, you use more gas and electricity, yes. Um, do I need to pay more for rent? This will be a no, because my, my landlord doesn't care about how much you produce. My landlord only cares about did I pay my rent on time. And then, do I need more equipment? Yes. So everything else except rent, uh, everything else is called variable good, a variable cost. Uh, can spell. But rent doesn't change. That's called fixed cost. Okay. So again, variable cost. Um, they do change depends on how much you produce. The so more you produce, the more variable cost you have. Uh, fixed cost wouldn't change. Doesn't matter how much you produce. Is that you have the same cost from from zero production to one million production. And then uh, total cost is a total between your total variable cost and total fixed cost. That's your total cost. And I also know your average total cost uh, is your, oh, that's, guys, there's another typo here. Uh, so your average total cost equals to your total cost divided by quantity. Uh, your average variable cost is your, this one's right, so total variable cost over quantity. Uh, and then average fixed cost is your uh, fixed cost over quantity and the marginal cost it's your changing total cost over changing quantity. Uh, the simplest way to find a variable, a marginal cost, is to find the difference between each level, between your each level of total cost. That's your uh, marginal cost. So uh, we have a table here. So it shows you your quantity, your total variable cost, total fixed cost. Um, all right, so for the total cost, you're going to take your variable cost here plus your fixed cost. That is your total cost over here. 
And then for the average variable cost, um, take your total variable cost um, divided by quantity. That's your average variable cost. Same thing for average fixed cost. So you have total fixed cost over quantity. Uh, that's your average uh, fixed cost. Now for average total cost, there are two ways to approach it. Uh, you can take your total cost. Um, divided by quantity, um, that will give you your average total cost. Or take the um, average variable cost plus the average fixed cost, um, that will also give you your average total cost. Now to find marginal cost, uh, it's going to be a little tricky. So for marginal cost, what you're going to do is to find a difference in each level of total cost. So um, And then divide it by 10, because the change here is a 10 for every level. Um, and then the change here, so for the first level is 30. 30 divided by 10 is 3. Second level is 20. 20 divided by 10 is a 2. And the next level is a 10. 10 right here. So every, every change in quantity is 10. So find a change in total cost um, divided by um, the change in the quantity. You get your marginal cost over here. It's a little more different. All right. So you can once you graph your total um, cost and total variable cost, the vertical difference between your total cost and total variable cost that's your total fixed cost, because your total cost remember equals to your total variable cost plus total fixed cost. Okay, so the difference between the two is just your total fixed cost. All right, but once you graph your average total cost, your ATC your AVC, your, a your AFC, um, your AFC, the average fixed cost is always going down, but looks like our ATC and the AVC, they tend to decrease first and then goes up. So whenever it goes up, this increasing part, that is the diminishing marginal return. The cost is getting more expensive for the companies because resource, especially employees, become less efficient. Um, also notice that wherever the marginal cost is intersecting with your average total cost or average variable cost this two point here they're the minimum of each one okay so that's the minimum atc right here this is the minimum avc right here okay all right so uh next let's look at some long-term cost um so for long-term cost um companies long-term cost will vary depends on how big they are um, so there are three types of um, long-term costs. They're called economy scale, um, this economy scale, and a cost return scale. So for economy scale, the ATC will fall when the production increases. So the more you produce, the cheaper it get. This economy scale is reversed. It says ATC will rise when, economy, when production is spent. So the more you produce, the more cost you have. And last one is called constant return to scale. This one says it doesn't matter how much you produce, your ATC will be the same, doesn't change. It's just called constant return to scale. And if you draw the, the three different lines, uh, your A, your economy scale is keep going down. Uh, constant return to scale is flat, and then this economy is going up. So it's an increasing cost. Okay. All right, guys. So that's it for this chapter. Uh, have a new question? Let me know. All right. Good luck. Bye bye.